Well, praise the Lord. Here we are again. Uh, I'm sitting down with uh, uh, Reverend Monica Delancey, and uh, we're uh, just having a good time talking about the things of God, talking about uh, uh, her experience growing up and, uh, in the Catholic Church and getting saved, and, and uh, uh, we're getting into the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You hadn't, uh, uh, you were talking about how your mother introduced you to mm -hmm. the uh, uh, to the baptism. And uh, we were talking about church and just sensing the presence of God. Um, something you had said to me made me think um, when I was a child in the basement of the Church of the Brethren, I was walking along and I thought to myself, there's something, there's oh, something yeah. else inside <laughs> me. You know, there's something in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think at that time I was becoming aware that we're not just... Uh, a body, a physical body, mm -hmm. or just a mind, but we have a spirit. We are a spirit. Yes. We have a soul and we live in a body, and that's the real us, and that's the part of us that contacts God. Absolutely. And yes. uh, you had a similar experience, I think. Uh, yeah, I was about um, nine, ten years old, and um, I was out on my backyard, mm -hmm. and um, I would just stand there very quietly, and I stood up with my hands straight out, and I just get real quiet, <laughs> and I could yeah. sense his presence. And if I was doing that several times for quite a while, and um, it was just, there's something alive in there. And, and I knew, I had been taught about um, uh, uh, the life of God being inside of yeah, me. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, one of my best friends from down the street came with another friend, a little friend that she wanted to introduce me to. And I was standing there like that, and she said, um, uh, you know, Monica, this is so-and-so. And I, and I said, shh, there's something alive in there. <laughs> and they turned around <laughs> and ran away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, I could sense my spirit, and, uh, and I just, it was just amazing to me that actually... You know, it made me think uh, how Hollywood glorifies the... Uh, the negative aspect, you know, yeah. the shining and the exorcist and, yes. and people possessed of the devil. But but uh, the reality is, if you're a Christian, God lives on the inside Absolutely. of us. Absolutely. And yeah. that is a real thing. That is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's not religion. That's not doctrine. That is God alive on yes. the inside of us. Yes. And, and if there's anything... Uh, that we could say that's different about religion. You know, we're not talking about just growing up in a church and learning the Ten Commandments and and learning uh, uh, the golden rule. You know, mm -hmm. do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. Jesus mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount, and we learned all those things as children growing up and and learned the Word and the Scriptures. Uh, but there's a reality yes. that God is alive yes. and God is in us. And this is more than just uh, um, a moral code. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just learning a religion. It's the life and nature of God on the inside of us. And, and uh, I became aware of that as a child. I remember singing the song, Come into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And uh, we sang about the fountain flowing deep and wide, you know. I never thought of, about it at the time flowing on the inside of me, but I know that's what we were talking about. We are yes. talking about that, that uh, well of water that springs up on the inside to eternal life. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's not religion. That's not... Uh, just following a, a moral code of ethics. That's the life yes. and nature and ability of God. Yes. And, and um, that makes all the difference. And, oh, absolutely. And whether you're a Catholic, whether you're Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, uh, what we all are made for and created for is that, uh, that relationship and mm -hmm. fellowship Yes. with the God who created the heaven and the earth. Absolutely, and, yes. Uh, and that's what you were experiencing. That's, yes, uh, yeah. That was that uh, experience on the sidewalk, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <clears throat> but uh, your mom introduced you and started telling you about tongues and, yes. and the Holy yeah. Spirit. Tell us a little more about that. Yes. What, uh, 
Well, um, she she that she just um, came and visited and uh, um, suggested some books, and um, and then something happened a couple of weeks later. I did buy I did buy those books. I bought myself. Um, I went to a bookstore and bought a little paperback. Uh, Good news for modern man, New Testament. Okay. And so I, had I started. One of those. Yeah, I, think I, I still have one of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that um, uh, uh, translation. When I was younger in the Lord and. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what happened was a couple of weeks later, this new family moved on post. We were we were um, in, uh, in the army. I was a I was a dependent, and uh, my boy, my son at the time, um, went up and started playing with this this little boy, and he kind of disappeared from the backyard. So I went looking for him. Okay. And when I got in the house, um, I, you know, knocked on the door and asked if Michael was there. And, and uh, my friend Sheila, they had the last name that we had. And, um, uh, but it was so funny um, at, I had at that time. And uh, 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 she said, come on in and sit down. And I noticed a Bible on, on uh, her table next to her uh, 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 sofa. And, um, she was in the kitchen and I could see her. She was fixing me some iced tea. And um, she, I, I looked at the Bible and I said to her, oh, I said, you read the Bible. My mother reads the Bible too. And she said, yes. She said, you know, if you have any questions you ever want to ask me, she said, just ask me. I will try. If I don't know the answer, I will try and find it out for you. Now, how old, how old was this girl? She was in her 20s she was about, along with you? Yeah, or? she was about my age. Okay. We were around the same age. We are probably 27, around there. So she she might have been a couple she years said, older. My mother reads the Bible, and apparently no. she was an authority <laughs> on it, too. Huh? Well, I said my mother read the Your Bible. Your mother read the yeah. Bible. And okay. she said, if you've got any questions, you just ask me. If I don't know, I will get you the answer. Okay, so she was a Christian, maybe a little more mature than yes. you were at the oh, time. Oh, absolutely. She was yeah. brought up in a Christian home, okay. as far as I knew. Yeah. And um, she then asked me um, a few days later uh, if I wanted to go to a Bible study with her. Okay. And I went to this Bible study, and um, um, I, I remember it distinctly. It was in a home. And um, the, uh, the fellow who was teaching the Bible study uh, taught on Philemon, the book of Philemon. And um, he asked me afterwards if I wanted to pray the sinner's prayer with him. And I did. Um, uh, and, but I, I re it's so funny what we were talking about, knowing the life of God is inside of us. I felt a pressure go off of my, my shoulders. Okay. I, and um, it lifted off of my shoulders. And afterwards, I, I really always had this question about why didn't I feel different inside? I, yeah. I definitely felt a pressure go off yeah. of my shoulders. And you, this is 20 years after I had been born again sure. and didn't have much understand. No, I had no, little or no understanding. So you're saying at the, the time you experience. were filled with the spirit, you felt this pressure. No, this was just in a Bible, in a Bible study, study where they just assumed I was not born again. Well, let's say this. Which uh, was great that Monica, I got prayed for. You were born again as a child, but mm -hmm. uh, you weren't really trained in a situation or right. raised in a situation that right. taught you how to stay free in God, Absolutely. free in the Word, mm -hmm. uh, you're probably receiving some deliverance at that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. I, you know, I truly believe that. Uh, yeah. You'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. Absolutely. And as you're really getting the pure Word of God, it'll start setting you free Absolutely. and lifting burdens off your life. That's I'm right. I'm sure that's what happened. I know though. that, yeah. I know, because yeah. I know the pressure was released. I mm -hmm. mean, I uh, and at that time, I really didn't understand it. But I knew something had happened. Yeah. And then uh, with Sheila, I went to I went to uh, church with her, and I remember thinking, these people believe the way I believe in God. Okay. And um, and then wow. the next Wednesday, I Sheila couldn't go, but I drove over to that house for the Bible study. But they had a sign up saying there's a meeting at um, the church that I had been to on Sunday. Okay. And um, I drove over to that church. I had to find my way out of that neighborhood because I had never really been there. Yeah. And the church was right off um, I-10 in El Paso. And I went in and the service had already started and um, a man named Joe Nay was um, a guest speaker there and he was teaching on righteousness by faith. 
yeah. and that we have rights with God. And all I could think of, and I always now, wanted to be... Now, is this uh, the church in Texas that you... Yeah, Abundant Living Faith Center. And who's the pastor there? At the Charles home? Neiman. Charles Neiman was mm -hmm. a pastor, and this is where you came into a revelation yes. of righteousness. Yes. And oh, this is, wow. And this That's really powerful. is the church. I was only there, I was there for maybe one full calendar year. And um, because um, we returned uh, to northern New York. Mm -hmm. and, but in that one calendar year, I believe, and I, I know it because I, it was uh, 36 years ago. And, um, and uh, uh, that uh, I had the basis that kept me strong for the rest, the sure, rest of that my that really put in you life. a foundation yes, that a foundation. you hadn't had before. Yes, and, and really, that's the that's the believer's number one need is to absolutely. understand his righteousness, absolutely, in Christ Jesus, yes. and received and uh, from uh, from the Lord. So uh, yeah, and it was at that time you got filled with the Holy Spirit in that church. Or? Yes, just about the time I started going, or right after. I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost in church. Okay. Um, I was kind of shy. I, I, I tend to be when I don't know people. I you know, once I get to know people, I I, then I you start, start talking. talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know me. You and go and know me. But uh, um, I, I really didn't want to go up and have hands laid on me. Yeah. And but my mother, um, one of the books uh, that my mother had suggested for me um, went through the steps of of getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. And um, I just knelt down in my bedroom, and um, I was a little afraid of tongues. It must have been, um, I will say it had to be after I went to that church because mm -hmm. I read Kenneth Hagin's book, Why Tongues, and it's a little red book. Okay. And I remember reading it and his experiences of praying and other people's experiences of praying for people when they didn't know that these people were needed prayer in any way. Yeah. And um, I wanted that. I yeah. wanted to experience that, and so um, I knelt at my, uh, my bedside, and I uh, and I went through the steps, and it took me two or three times to really to really just let my uh, prayer language uh, come forth, but it did, Praise and God. Um, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. We'll uh, uh, we talk a little more about that, but I want to talk about that foundation you talked about, righteousness. Sure. What a powerful thing yes. to, to come into the knowledge of that. We'll close this session and we'll have another one. Okay. Yeah, praise the Lord. He's coming in power. Hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He 